On social media, it's easy to make everything look like a win, everything look good, right? That's what social media is all about. But in life, they're winners and they're losers, whether it be real estate, crypto, it's not always a win, but it's more about how you learn from that loss. And so this is a very cool losing story. You know, as a child growing up, you liked Ferraris, Lamborghinis. As a young boy, that was a goal of mine to one day have a Ferrari. Four years ago, I sold a teardown behind the Bel Air Hotel. Uh, it was $24 million. And in the rickety old garage opener, I pulled it up and I looked inside and there was this old classic 1974 Ferrari Dino. The Dino, it hadn't been started in like a decade. And it had to be towed out of there because it wasn't moving. When I sold that house, I took the commission that I made from it and I bought that that classic 1974 Dino for $200,000. I remember the next day, somebody offered me $80,000 more. I thought it was really cool, I didn't want to sell it, and so I said no to that deal. There's only two things you do with Ferraris. Number one, nothing. Put it back in the garage, call me in 10 years, and it'll be worth a lot more money. Or number two, you don't just redo the engine. You don't just redo the interior. If you're going to, you do a 100 point frame off nut and bolt restoration. And that's what we decided to do here. And every month I was cutting a check for $20,000 to restore that Ferrari, hoping that, you know, maybe it's gonna be 800,000. So here I am, two years later, I'm into this Ferrari for $580,000. I have the car for about a month. A real estate opportunity presents itself where I need to invest 700 grand and I'm going to double that 700 and make $1.4 million within a 24 month period. You know, these are the type of deals you see when you're heavily involved in real estate, but you gotta be able to act quick. I didn't have the money at the time, so I decided to sell the Ferrari. I try to sell it, no takers. One month goes by, two months goes by, three months go by. I miss out on the real estate opportunity. It's gone. Because I was already in the mind frame of selling it, I decided I just wanted to get rid of the Ferrari. I was pissed that I missed the real estate opportunity. I ended up selling the Ferrari for $420,000. That was a $160,000 loss, two years of time loss, and $700,000 in opportunity cost of what I would have made if I had that money. I learned a lot from that financial loss, that stupid decision, whatever you want to call it. Number one, stay in your lane. Everybody wants you to invest. You go on Instagram, you see everybody's making money here or there. There's no automatics in life. You don't always make money. Forget it. Even though you might hear everybody's making money, it doesn't mean you're going to. Number two, whenever it comes to investing, invest what you're okay losing. If you're one of those people in crypto and you invest in crypto and you look at your phone every single day to see where that crypto coin is, invest in it and go live your life, don't watch it. So only invest what you're okay losing. And then lastly, I would say this, your first offer is typically your best offer. The week that I bought that Ferrari, I could have made $80,000. We say that in real estate all the time. No one ever went broke hitting singles and doubles. It's okay not to hit home runs every time. Anyways, uh, that's it. I just wanted to tell you guys that because I was going through Instagram and, and I thought that it would be refreshing for people to hear. It's not always about wins. It just doesn't work out that way. This was the actual actual video that I shot the week before I got that real estate opportunity and decided to sell the Dino. And uh, well, rest is history or a write-off or whatever you want to call it. <laughs> so you're probably wondering to yourself, why is there a vlog of Josh Altman's coming out right now? Well, I'm going to tell you why. People who know me know that I love cars. They know that every season on Million Dollar Listing, I'm driving different cars. So there's been a lot, but there's one. There is one that's in a league of their own. This one is on another level, and I wanted to introduce you to my new pride and joy, my 1974 Ferrari Dino. not be one of the most well-known Ferraris in the world, but actually it was rated one of the top 10 Ferrari designs ever. So this signature right here is the actual signature of Enzo Ferrari's son, Alfredo. Alfredo actually died tragically at the age of 24. 
uh, and that is why this was named after him. And Alfredo was an engineer at the actual Ferrari factory. So this was Ferrari's way of building a mid-engine affordable sports car. It was designed by the famous Panaferina, and this was actually at the time known as one of the best Ferraris in the world at that time because of it, it had superb handling. So driving this, even today, the handling is incredible. There were only 4,067 Ferrari Dinos ever built. This is number 206, and this is a GTS. The GTS is the convertible, the GT is the hard top. I do have the actual cover, but I never wear it on the car because I like to drive around and clearly because I have a really good tan. <laughs> so check this out here. So these are all original 1974 parts. This engine was completely taken apart and we made the decision to use all the original parts and put it back together as opposed to getting newer stuff. Now this is a 246, which is a 2.4 liter, six cylinder engine. This is a mid-engine Ferrari. So it feels different than the ones that are uh, not mid-engine, like the newer ones or some older classics as well. Uh, but this is all original. Every nut, every bolt on this Ferrari has been refurbished and put back into this Ferrari. What I'm gonna show you next is the actual trunk. Now this is real clean. I always felt that you could tell if a car was redone in a couple different ways and if it was redone correctly. And you know, looking at this, I think it's clear that you can see this car was done to the nines in every aspect, including the trunk here. I have taken this uh, to Malibu multiple times. I've uh, thrown a, a bag in the back there and hit the beach out in Malibu as well. So although it is a museum car, I, again, I like to use it. I like to enjoy it. I like hearing comments when I drive by. People going, oh my God, whoa, what, is that a Dino? And then they look carefully and they say, actually, that's a, a mint Dino, which is super rare. What's really cool is the manufacturer of the windows. You see an A there? So that's the company that manufactures them. A for Altman, I thought that was specific for me. I thought Sean who built this for me gave me a little surprise, but that's actually all original. Now this Ferrari specifically is finished in blue metalizzato. When we were stripping it down under the red, Sean found a blue color and he calls me up and says, Josh, you're not gonna believe this. The Ferrari is blue. What do you wanna do? I said, what do I wanna do? I wanna take it back to original, everything original, because the only thing cooler than a red Ferrari is a blue Ferrari. <laughs> there are only 240 or so that were blue. And so this is the original color combination. We have the Daytona seats. So the Daytona seats have the black leather strips throughout the seats. Completely original, restored, beautiful. Uh, so it's pretty rare to see this color combo. And it's actually, it's a beautiful combo if you take a look at it from in here. I'll tell you, it's obviously not the safest thing in the world, but there was only one mirror. This is what it looked like. The door handles are super cool. That's it. That's how you open it up. Um, it's a very lightweight car, but it's sturdy. Like I, I feel safe when I drive it. It was the key. That's what the key to the classic Ferrari looks like. What's nice about this car, it starts up every single time. Doesn't matter if it's sitting um, for a week, two weeks, three weeks. It usually doesn't sit that long because I like to drive it. What's also very interesting that I didn't know about the Dino Ferrari is the fabric of the dashboard. I actually at first did not like this, but of course it's original, so I went with it. It does have air. The air conditioning, like any old car, is not really good. It gets very hot, so I like to wear a hat when I drive this sometimes. This had 27,000 original miles on it. So it is a brand new car. I love this car, I drive it. But it is nice to know that over the years, this will go up in value because there's no more of these ever being made, just like there's no more land being made by God. And that's why I love this. So let's turn this puppy on, you guys ready? Here we go. I drive this mostly in third gear. Sometimes I'll take it up to fourth gear. Rarely do I get to fifth gear. No real reason to really do that. Uh, I'm not racing in this thing. I'm enjoying myself in it. The actual cover goes behind here, which is what this is to cover the cover. Um, and then there was one last part actually that I did not show you. 
And here we are. This is the uh, original spare tire, which is stored up front here. Uh, everything in there that you see is original. We really went period correct, color correct. Everything in this Dino uh, is everything you would have seen if you went into a Ferrari dealership in February of 1974. I love the look of it. It's a piece of art. It is something that I will gladly pass on to my children. I hope that they will one day enjoy it as much as I enjoy it today. And in the meantime, I'm gonna go take this for a ride. I hope you enjoy it. And there are many things in my life that are for sale. This is not. Well, for the right price, it is, of course.